you were saying the last time I, I remember when the Texas shooting happened, I distinctly remember you saying to me, like, I don't even know that I want to live in this country anymore. Mm-hmm. What did you, what were you, what did you mean by that? Or what was going through your mind when you were thinking about that? Well, just like, I don't want to live here. But I feel, well, I guess when I said that, I was feeling like, I mean, after all of these like incidents happen, I feel scared and like it like, causes like me really bad anxiety. So then I'm like, okay, well, it doesn't have to be this way. So I could just, you know, move to another country and not even have to worry about it anymore. I know other countries, like, no country's perfect, but like, I, mean, I feel like anywhere else at this point would be better than being here because to be scared to like go to school go to the grocery store anywhere basically in public like always have to be alert scared yeah i realize that like i don't know what that really feels like because i mean i know what it feels like to be an adult and feel a certain amount of like fear and anxiety because of these these incidents um but to be a student to be in school um we didn't have active shooter drills when i was growing up yeah i just like those those drills they scare me like i don't know they just scare me i know what it feels like as a parent when i um when we'll get those messages like whenever they do an active shooter drill, they will send a message about it. And sometimes it's not completely clear immediately. Is this a drill or is this, is there an actual like incident going on at the school? And I know that feeling of like a panic that I, as a parent experience, it's like this, like my stomach just drops. Cause that's happened before when I've dropped you guys off at school and then I'm headed to work. And then I get one of those notifications and yeah. it's terrifying um but there was something that you said the other day that really got me thinking about how even from my experience I don't know what it's like to have to be sent to school be sent to school after something has happened like that um, after there's been not only a, a threat or an incident at some other school, but a threat at your school. So, you know, I really, I really appreciate how you have, like, the way that you've articulated it to me and to daddy, like, the way that you've written about it has been really helpful for me understanding, like, how you feel um do you feel like it's hard to put words to the emotions that it causes yeah not really actually i know i feel scared and i feel angry and upset Mm -hmm. sad Mm -hmm. tell me about that feeling being numb because you mentioned that you were like i feel numb or the last well, time it happened, I feel numb, and that because that scared me. Because it keeps happening over and over again, so it's like, um, I hate to say normal, but like, kind of is. And it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way. What do you think adults need to know or do? They're, I feel like they're not doing anything, no offense, what they really want. Like, that's just it. Offering thoughts and prayers. Yeah, it's not really, I mean, you can always pray, but like, it's not really, the thoughts and stuff, it's not, it's not doing anything, because it keeps happening. It's like they say, faith without works is dead, right? Yeah. So... Like they're saying that, but they're not, they're only saying that you can't, you have, it has to be both. Like you have to say, you have to do your thoughts and prayers, but you have to actually do something about it. What would you do if you could, if you had the power to change things now, what would you do? Like what do you mean? 
like what would you do to what laws would you enact or what what changes would you and it's like just it's not that hard like i don't understand like people are dying keeps happening you want to hold on to your precious little guns or whatever like it's not people are dying and they're only they only think about themselves at the end of the day it's all about them what they want they don't care about the common good they're selfish they especially don't care about me especially me because like yeah you feel like the last couple of years that that's been more apparent to you i think i mean i was younger but i mean after like 2020 everything like i just like my point of view about everything changed because a lot of things like came out during 2020. Like everything, is, I feel like everything is getting exposed year after year after 2020. So, in what ways? Just I don't know. Like what do you what do you feel your mind got open to or your eyes got open to from 2020 and beyond? I mean, I guess I already knew because I I had heard about shootings like when I was in um, like younger grades. But the thing about 2020 was just like it happened like a lot, like one after the other. It was happening very quickly, just like with like the supermarket and in Texas, like within like a week or two or whatever it was. That's just how it felt like I knew about what happened um at the church in charleston and the other like police brutality but it didn't feel like it was happening like one after the other after another after another but like in 2020 like when george floyd happened and Breonna taylor and like all those things like just was happening very fast i think it was also different because we were basically at home yeah i was at home so like i was reading about it i was hearing about it like there was nothing else that i was really doing at the time so that's how like, my perspective changed. Yeah. yeah. You had read that article by Yolanda Renee King. Do you remember when we were talking about that? Mm -hmm. What did you remember? What What did you say about that? What was your, I'm trying to remember how you put it. Um, when we were talking about the article that she wrote. I don't remember. Wait. About adults. Well, like, you don't know what it's like. You're not doing anything. You're not doing enough. I don't know. Some people are trying to do so, like, but it's not, it's not helping. I don't know. Like, what? I mean, honestly, what it really comes down to is who's in our government. The wrong people are in the wrong leadership positions, and that's why it keeps happening. They're selfish. That's that's why it keeps happening. They're in the wrong. It's just the wrong people. So what does that make you want to do? I know, you know for me as a parent, um, this whole this whole period that we've been in has like awakened me you know, awakened my political awareness and activism in, in ways that, you know, you know, I've always been somebody who voted and who was, you know, conscious, politically conscious and aware, but, you know, we're in, we're truly in a life or death situation and it's in, on so many levels. Um, so when I think about myself as, as an adult and as a parent um, and as, you know, someone who's responsible for you and your sister and the, your well-being, um, it definitely has impacted how I am thinking and the decisions that I'm making. Um, what about you? Because I feel like you, we had that conversation the other day where you were saying, you know, you had been thinking like, you know what, I don't want to live here anymore. Mm -hmm. I grew up. I'm, yeah. I'm out. I was talking like, yeah, I just don't want to live here anymore. But then something changed when we went to the um, Mother Emanuel. Mm -hmm. 
and for the for the for the seventh yeah anniversary and just anniversary. like i mean well after the insurrection i um started thinking about oh, politics it's kind of weird that that would like spark an interest in politics for me but it kind of mm -hmm. did because i'm like this is crazy like it's it should not be this way and then I kind of kind of forgot about that and thought about like what I my other aspirations I want to do when I grow up. Mm -hmm. But then going to Charleston and seeing Mother Emanuel and just being there, like it kind of like reopened the door. Like I think I'm gonna be like you know going into politics maybe because like even if things can change, you know while I'm still young, like you can't like let the change happen. And then be like, oh, everything's fine, so we can just go back to normal. Like, I feel like you just have to keep the right people there. So I feel like even if things miraculous change, miraculously change, and it has to change a lot. Like, I don't know if even that much change can happen between the time that I'm, um, I don't know, this age, and then by the time I'm an adult, like even your age, because like so much damage has already been done for years. Ever since like this country was first created, like there's been so much damage done so i feel like it's like really hard to like undo that and actually fix it in between right now and then to when i'm good and like grown up so that's why i feel like i'm just yeah i feel like what what shifted what you're saying like shifted for you is like there's a it's like fight or flight right? yeah and feeling so like were... also like I don't really like this country, like feeling like, you know, I don't really like it here. And that's why I was thinking like, yes, I want to move to another country and just mm -hmm. leave. But then I really start to think about it. I'm like, no, like, this is my country. I was born here. I belong here. You know, like, they're not going to like put these laws in place and make me scared because that's ultimately what they're trying to do. They're trying to scare us and get us to either live in fear so they can do what they want or push us out and I'm not going anywhere. So that's why I want to stay and go into politics because no. What do you think it would take for more kids and teens like you to get active? Because my perspective, you know, I guess being in mental health, I always think about how there are certain situations that we can't change or we can't change by ourselves but we have two options. We can feel hopeless about it, or we can fight or find something to empower ourselves to find some role that we can play. And that's why, you know, I, you really encourage me by what you've said and what you've shared. And so thinking about having a career in politics, for example, um, the writing that you've done mm -hmm. and sharing that writing because you're not, you are not the only person who feels the way you do, you know, there's power in using your voice, right? Um, so, yeah, I think that thinking about between now and when you're an adult and you are like in the position, you're sitting in the seat that I'm sitting in as a, you know, a full grown adult or even older um, how do you empower yourself along the way? I, I'm thinking like the, the aspirations that you have, the writing that you're doing, those are, those seem to me to be ways that you're empowering yourself. And I think that's so important mm -hmm. in the face of the challenges. Um, what do you think, how, what would you say to other teens and other, you know, younger kids who are feeling the need to do the same thing, who are feeling the way you're feeling? Mm, I'll say, the ones feeling the way that I'm feeling, I guess, start thinking about, like seriously thinking about ways you can actually change, because it's one thing to like say you're gonna do it, but it's another to actually like do it and make plans to do it. That's really all I can say. I mean, everybody, I feel like everybody like, shows or everybody um what am i trying to say 
everybody um like stands up for them not stands up but like just like fights back differently mm. and i feel like that could be useful like people would like you know doing it in different ways like you know protesting making clubs at school social media especially but i mean you have to be really careful about social media because i mean you know there's people that are good on there that are actually truthful but there's a lot of like you know big people on there that's not really doing it mm -hmm. so i i would just say like that and just like do whatever you think is necessary or do it however you want to just do it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think it's a really that's a really good point i mean I what i've been telling the adults like that i work with in my practice and, and other people is like we can't stick our heads in the sand you know we can't ignore what's going on we also have to find balance between being active taking an active role in changing things and then taking care of ourselves mm -hmm. and it's because if if we go too far in one direction that leads to burnout and feeling you can feel really overwhelmed and depressed um and anxious and then you go the other direction that would be to like put blinders on and pretend like everything is fine so you have to find that you know that place in between but um i think that finding ways to be active to use your voice and to take care of yourself and to recognize the ways in which life is good, you know, to like mm -hmm. be grateful for things, mm -hmm. to do things that you enjoy, you know, to not let it, I know we talked about it as like terrorism, right? That these, even though it's not exactly the same as like the terrorism that we experienced, this was before you were born, but when 9-11 when occurred, but, all of these, all of, yes, no, it is terrorism. It's just different. And, and, and right now it's sort of coming at us in all these different ways. It's not necessarily one concerted terrorism effort. I feel like, well, I know what you said about burnout and depressed and that sort of thing, but like, I know this is kind of sad to say, like, I'd rather feel that I'd rather like that happens to me if it meant that things actually changed. It's powerful. Say, say more about what you mean by that. Well, I'd rather, if I did a lot to help change things and like felt burned out, depressed, anxious, and scared, I'd rather feel that way mm -hmm. if it meant that things actually changed. Like I would rather, you know, because at the end of the day, I feel like it's not just about, it's not just about me. It's not mm -hmm. just about any one person. It's about everyone. So, mm -hmm. wow, that's powerful. I wish more adults understood mm -hmm. that so perspective. Much. I think that, because, well, the idea is that it's like either you do the work of like trying to change things and maybe you feel burned out and depressed and anxious, or you don't do the work, you kind of ignore things and feel, you know, act as though everything is like normal somehow. But I don't think that that's really, I don't, I don't really think that you can truly live in the society and ignore what's going on and not have it seep into you. So I think either way, you're going to feel, you're mm -hmm. going to feel it. It's just, are you aware of mm -hmm. how you're feeling it or yeah. how you're feeling? And then are you doing something to like manage those feelings? How do you manage that when you feel anxious about these situations? What do you think is like, I don't know. What's the strategy that you use? Distracting myself and doing other things and just making sure I'm keeping busy. But like, I don't know, this sort of anxiety is different from, you know, other things that like, you know, can cause anxiety because I feel like it's constantly living over my head. Like it's a very, it's real. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I can distract myself for a certain amount of time until I hear about another shooting or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's not like it's not like you know other you know things that you know impact my anxiety where it's like um it's not really it's kind of yeah mm -hmm. so you almost like make a conscious decision like okay and now i'm going to unplug and distract myself until from this it, yeah, until it happens again because you know it's gonna happen again 
but it also sounds like you're aware and you're like, I'm, I'm not going to let myself just be distracted indefinitely because this is important and I need to pay attention to what's going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, um, I think that everything that you've said is completely valid. All the emotions we are, we're living in a, just in a period of insanity and um, to feel the way you're feeling is completely healthy in the face of that. And I think that um, we're going to keep on working together. I appreciate you being able to tell me how you feel. And if there are other ways that I can support you, that daddy can support you, that our family and others can support you, let us know.